you know when we're ready uh, good evening uh, we'd like to call this ordinance meeting to order at uh, 6 31 p.m. Uh, with us we have councilor vacant um, and as well we have the council president um, madam president uh, Tessa Murphy Rambaletti filling in to help us uh, achieve quorum for tonight um later on uh counselor mcgrath smith will join us and counselor bartley hopefully will join us and counselor uh rivera uh, jenny rivera is on vacation so kudos to her have fun um i like to uh, well, counselor I guess brain I, is in attendance oh and I would like to uh, recognize Councillor Graney online on the phone, Thank you. and also Councillor. No, no worries. And then Councillor Carmen Ocasio, Ward Two City Councillor here in Council Chambers as well. Uh, we also have the Mayor present. Um, but uh, motion. So I would say. Just to take the the roll call yeah. vote. We don't have to do yeah, that because nobody's online. No. Oh, yeah, on perfect. The committee, so you're good. With you're that. good. Um, I would just suggest that we leave item one on the table since we don't have a quorum of the people that were at the meeting to approve minutes. <laughs> I second that. I would, okay, great. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion to take up item two. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Item two is filed by Councillor McGrath-Smith. Um, section 8.1. Point nine be amended to include the following language after the last sentence requirement to submit new technical data if the town acquires data that it changes the base flood elevation in the FEMA map special flood hazard areas the town will within six months notify FEMA of these changes by submitting the technical of or scientific data that supports the changes notification shall be submitted to the NFIP state coordinator Massachusetts Department of Conservation and Recreation NFIP program specialist Federal Emergency Management Agency Region 1 um, and uh, right now Councilor McGrath-Smith is not with us to kind of expand on this um, if it's the will of the body I will entertain a motion to table it until she's here to actually well, address it. Well we have it, unless... a recommendation from the planning okay. board I'm with it. With the order I mean it's a technical matter I'm with it I'm with it. So uh, what is the will of the body at the moment? Well, um, in the letter dated June 13th, the planning board says, please be advised that the Hoyoke planning board at their June 11th meeting discuss the above reference text changed request to the zoning ordinance and after discussion based on information taken and they note the language the rest of it mm -hmm. and um, they recommend to the ordinance committee that the council adopt the zoning text change request for section 8.1 floodplain overlay district this change to our zoning ordinance is essentially technical and is needed to bring our ordinance into compliance with federal regulations and the FEMA flood insurance rate map and base flood elevations Perfect. I'll so make a motion to approve. Do I hear a second? second? All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? That motion passes 3 0. Um, motion to take up item 3. Second. All in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Item 3 was filed by Councilor McGee. Order that the zoning ordinance section 7.8 wireless telecommunications facilities and antennas be amended to include small wireless facilities. So this one we've met uh, a couple times. We already had the public hearing. Um, I think the language was already set. We had a recommendation from the planning board too as well. So um, but I'll entertain Councilor Bacon. If I may, I'm a little bit confused on this one because it came to us from the planning board. We made some amendments, and then I understood it needed to go back to the planning board because we recommended amendments. And so it's not clear to me whether this is approving our amendments or if this is just the definitions. I'm not sure. Jeffrey, can you clarify? 
Yes, uh, so this does reflect the, the changes. Uh, your amendments went to the planning board and this is what they sent back. Um, I looked through the language and I did find that the five amendments you made are in this language. Oh, okay, thank you, oh. because I just, there were so many words, I didn't pick up on the... I think maybe next time... Whether the language changes were just, there and if they yeah. were accepting them. Because yeah. there's, usually we get a letter, you know? Yeah. Or like red line. Yeah, that was going right. to say maybe next but, time, like underline. But um, if you've taken the time to do that, we appreciate it. And yeah. I understanding that, I would make a motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, that motion passes 3-0 um, that uh, we approve the zoning ordinance. Motion to take up item four. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, item four was filed by Councilor McGee. Um, order that the position of Chief Administrative and Financial Officer be created and added to schedule a, um, we've had several, well, a couple meetings on this already. Um, with us we have the Mayor and also our City Treasurer, Rory, um, to also expand on some of this because uh, I think for us, we voted for this already on, at, at full council, but it got sent back. In the budget. In the budget, right. So it, at the end of the day, I think for us, it's trying to figure out how we can move forward and continue the process. Um, so if you'd like to expand. Entertain a motion to allow the mayor and the treasurer mm -hmm. to Unless speak. committee wants to wait till the rest of the members I know. are here. It's yeah, kind of true. a big item. Yeah. That is true. I don't know. Uh, but on the other hand, folks are here for it, so. True. I don't disagree. Maybe see what the maybe see what Mayor Garcia would like. Um, all right. So how about we table that until they come? So we have Councillor Bartley and Councillor McGrath Smith present in case they have. I know Councillor Bartley was one of the ones that had a lot of questions on it as well. So I want to make all sure. All right. I'll make a motion to table until the other members arrive. Second. Well, assuming they arrive. <laughs> Yeah, if they don't, we can always yeah. bring it back up. And Second. I would, uh, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, motion is passed. Uh, I would say take up item six. Maybe those, they kind of go together. I don't know. Yeah, that's why I would wait for item five as well, or unless you want to table it too as well. Yep. Um, motion to leave item five on the table so the other members arrive. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so motion to take up item six. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh. So item six was filed by myself. Um, order that the city council review noise ordinance and require a decibel meter reading before a ticket can be submitted or for music to be asked to be turned down. If it is my understanding that the department has the necessary devices to measure readings and we want to be sure that they are being utilized in case citations are challenged in court. Um, this was tabled before. Um, and the I recommend to table it again, just because we're we're still waiting for uh, someone, a representative from the police department, to come in and weigh in okay. before we actually um, do any alterations to the ordinance. Okay. Um, so the chief is currently on vacation, or the interim chief. Oh, okay. Um, so I would take. I make a motion to table at the request of the maker. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Motion is tabled three zero. A motion take up item seven. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, item 7 was filed by Councillor Jordan, ordered that the City of Holyoke develop a personnel policy for the handling of administrative leave and codifying the rules into ordinance as recommended by the personnel department, including but not limited to when employees should or should not be placed on paid leave or unpaid leave. The current process appears lacking objective standards. Taxpayers should also be protected to ensure people who should not be out on paid administrative leave are placed on uh, unpaid administrative leave. This, um, this issue has been tabled a couple times. Uh, I brought it forward to kind of like try to, hopefully, I was hoping Councillor Jordan would be here so he can expand a little more because for me it's a little hard. I, I get what's going on, what he's trying to do, but I also see what the city city's personnel department has, what steps they've put in place and what measures they've been taking to kind of address some of these issues. And 
in my opinion, I kind of feel like it's, it's, it might be a lot better for them to have the flexibility versus codifying some of these rules where anytime they want to change a rule, they would have to come to us and go through the process every time. But the mayor is here if he wanted to speak on this one. I'm not sure. Um, which has to do with the personnel policy. Um, but Item <coughs> 7. Happy to answer any questions you have. Yeah, so this um, item was filed by Councilor Jordan, uh, March 21st of 2023, um, where it was the City of Holder develop a personnel policy for handling of administrative leave and codifying the rules into ordinance as recommended by personnel. Um, I guess maybe you could speak to what things are being done already, if they are or not, um, or if you think that this would be something that we should if this the, the council should be in favor. not to say that we should but we should, it should be considered in a sense sorry council i'm having a hard time hearing you it's over here with the fan. yeah right all right my uh, bad you just want me to I talk got you, I got a little you. bit about it or so, yeah, yeah, yeah i guess because okay. uh the thing i again i wish councillor jordan was here because he filed the order but i think the expectation is to try to codify some of the administrative leave policy policies um and put them into ordinance um and i I'm not sure where. Talking about the financial policies? Nah, um, mm -mm. HR, HR policies around, um, it says, administrative leave and codifying the rules into ordinance as recommended by the personnel department included, but not limited to when employees should or should not be placed on paid leave or unpaid leave. The current process appears lacking objective standards. Taxpayers should also be protected to ensure people who should not be out on an um, paid administrative leave or placed or administrative leave. So this, this item has been what tabled. What item is that? <laughs> Huh? Seven. Yeah. Seven. And Go ahead, Councilor Vacant. Thank you. So we did get a communication back oh. on this mm. with some comments a couple months ago, not attached to this, but prior to this. Okay. That talked about some of the complexities and. Right. This, I think, came out of the whole thing. Yes. With the. With the police department. Uh -huh. Yeah. Some of the issues. Yeah. Uh, so. so yeah. I don't know where the little body is with this particular item. Um, I go ahead. I, um, I'm just wondering if it would. So the personnel director is on vacation this week. Yeah. Um, and I'm not even certain if Lisa knew this item was up. So. So maybe we should table it. I'm wondering because this is her wheelhouse. Yeah. Personnel director together with the solicitor. All right. We'll give them another shot. I'll make a motion yeah. to table Second. so that the appropriate. All in favor? Comment. Aye. 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 Uh, the motion is table 3 0, item 7. And let me make sure I'm speaking it to the mic. It's just weird because I got like an echo here. I might have to Eight. lower this volume over here. Can I lower that? Welcoming Councillor uh, David Bartley. Mr. Chairman? Yes, uh, Councillor Graney. I'd appreciate you taking up item number eight before you get into the other ones because yes, I have limited that, time. That, that was my goal. I got you, bro. I got you. Thank you. Yep, no worries. Yep, I was on that. So we're on item eight. Yep, we're on item eight. And we'll get to the other ones that we table when Mike gets here. But I'll take a motion to take up item eight. Okay, a second, all in favor, aye, aye, that's 3-0. Uh, item 8 was filed by Councilor Graney, ordered that the City of Holyoke Tax Workoff Program for Seniors be increased from 30 to 70 slots. Furthermore, that the stipend be increased from 750 to 1,000. Rationale, um, applications for this program have dramatically increased. These economic times wanted to propose changes. Councilor Graney, since you are online, would you like to speak more on the matter? Yes, I would. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. No worries. Uh, the situation is uh, dire for a lot of our seniors out there as far as economics are concerned. And uh, I've been informed by the uh, director of the Senior Center that there were 61 applications for this program this year. Now, that encompasses the whole city, uh, 61. I don't think it would be a major financial burden on, burden on the city budget. Uh, 
Of course, in 1960 or 2022, the expenditure was $21,750 in tax and tax credits uh, for people, and there were 29 people that, that took advantage of it. Uh, I think it would be a, a very good sign of the city council to show our senior citizens out there that uh, we care about the burden that they're carrying in this economy and to see if we could uh, enhance uh, more people to be put on this program so that they could get a tax break from the city of Hoyle, which many of them have been paying for, for uh, many, many years, some uh, up to 50 years and they may like to take advantage of a program like this. This would not affect the, uh, the veterans benefit. Uh, the veterans benefit uh, would not be affected by this order, but of course that is a, uh, uh, something that could be addressed at a later date. So I would appreciate the committee's uh, uh, um, opinion on this and, and, and hopefully that uh, we can uh, do something to help uh, a lot of our seniors out there who are, are being crunched by this, uh, this economy. Thank you. Councillor, thank you, Councillor Gurney. Uh, Councillor Vacan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So I'm in strong support of this. As long as there's no limiting factor, you know, from the state or anything else, you know, that would affect it outside of the city. You know, some of these programs have other definitions and requirements. I'm not sure about this one. Mm -hmm. So income based type stuff, right? I'm sorry? Income based possibly, you mean? No, well, um, sometimes there are limits just relative to how many slots there can be for things. Okay. And I, I'm just not sure about this particular program, but what I'd like to do is see the committee recommend it out favorably, um, and then barring you know, any other finding that says there's some reason why we can't do it, that we would move forward with it. People still have to apply for it. It's not just that anybody's, you know, because there were 61 necessarily, there would be 61, I guess. But um, I don't know the entire procedure, um, but as a concept, um, and I'm aware of that program generally. I do know now that if people do it, they actually get income report for like a job. Okay. So it's changed somewhat from what it was in the early days. So people do, if they do get a bigger break, they're still going to have to pay something out of that, I guess, because it's considered income. Okay. So anyway, yep. I'm in support of it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, before I go, Councillor Bartley? No? Um, so for, I, I think the questions that I have is like, where would the money come from? And I know it's not a lot of money. I think it's just, wouldn't this be more like a finance question first and then for us to change any policy around it, it comes to us after finance talks about where the cost would come from and they identify it. Does, I, I'm just asking as a question. Well, we pass a lot of things. Mr. Chair. That we don't have Mr. the Chairman. money lined up for. No, you see. Ahead that. of time. So, just saying. Yeah, no, uh, that's a great point to make. I just, I think for me and, and, and Councillor Graney, and then I see uh, our treasurer has his hand raised, if I could recognize him too as well. Before I recognize him, I'm going to recognize uh, Councillor Graney. Uh, yeah, just just briefly, uh, the, I, I don't think it would be, the, although it is a financial transaction, the, fi the finances would come from a tax rebate that they would have on their, their property. It would not be an outright uh, stipend that they're paid or anything like that. Yeah, but thank you. Probably, no, thank you. But I think it would still impact somehow how you're taking in taxes. And maybe it's small, minuscule dollars, but it's just understanding the mechanism, I think, for me. Um, I'm, I'm in agreement and I'm in total support of it. It's just understanding where the money's going to come from and how the, like, the mechanism works. But, count, I mean, the treasurer is here if... I can entertain a motion to recognize it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Yeah, uh, first, thank you, Councillor Graney, for filing this. I, I know that the Senior Center Director uh, and I were having a conversation prior to this being filed, and she was hoping that a counselor would take this up. So uh, just a couple of uh, clarifying uh, points. Um, you're absolutely right. Um, it, 
comes from the taxes, right? So it's it, there's nothing, not, not a line item. It would just be that much less that we would right. potentially collect. Uh, we're talking about thousands of dollars. And I mean, when I say thousands, I don't mean tens of thousands mm -hmm. or hundreds of thousands. I mean thousands of dollars that we wouldn't receive. Um, the state, this is one of those local options where when it was first adopted, the city decided to select uh, one uh, within a range of, of number of hours or number of uh, tax that you'd be able to get off. We selected um, within that range. That range has increased, but it takes action of the council for the local assessor. And this project uh, program is managed by the uh, senior center just because of the nature of their work. The veteran service office, I know you have an additional item. Uh, just, I mean, could not support these two items more. Um, uh, that program's run out of the Veterans Service Office. Um, same thing, you know, there was a, a, a range in which the city could adopt. We selected, maybe the range has changed since then. We have to take further action to be, allow our assessors to do this. Um, it's not just a rebate. That's, that's what's really cool about this program. Anybody that has worked in the city um, most likely has uh, worked with these folks. These are people that apply, um, and then they're actually uh, teamed up with different offices. And so the skill set that they bring, I mean, I can think of at one point uh, a, a veteran um, worked for the JAG, uh, the Judge Advocate General Corps uh, in the Navy. They came and they helped uh, for their time in the solicitor's office and worked on some projects. We've had folks in our office. Mm -hmm. So this is just a, a phenomenal program. It is uh, minuscule, it would, you know, the financial impact, but the benefit both to the seniors and that knowledge uh, that they bring to the various city offices is just absolutely phenomenal. And the last thing I'll mention, uh, Councillor Vacan, there are some uh, in potential impacts to a senior's uh, income tax mm -hmm. filing, especially if they are claiming the circuit breaker credit, okay. uh, which is specifically for seniors that still live in their homes, and it's a uh, credit, a tax credit that the state of Massachusetts uh, has um, where you're able to, even if you don't file for anything else, you're able to take the expense that you pay in your taxes, uh, real estate taxes, and potentially some water or sewer, and you're able to get a credit back on that. Obviously, the amount you pay is what your credit is based on what you pay. So if you're paying that much less because of a program like this, yeah. then it might go down. Um, but I just wanted to clarify a few things. Um, and uh, again, thank you, Councillor Graney, for filing this. Um, and if there's any specific questions I can answer, I would be more than happy to. Thank you, uh, Councillor Murphy from Maletti. Thank you. Um, um, so just more of a logistical question for the treasurer, just since I'm not familiar with the process. You said that the council needs to take action on it. Is that is this order, does it suffice as yes. taking action or do we need to file? No, I believe that I believe that this, that would really, I mean, we should double check with the law department and to yeah. Councillor Vacant's point about you know, maybe getting it all buttoned up before the full council meeting to not stretch this out. Um, but my understanding is the language that's been presented to you is exactly what needs to happen okay. uh, in order for that to take place. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So I will make a motion that we adopt this order. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes 3-0. Uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman? Yes. I just want to thank the uh, subcommittee for their support. Appreciate it very much. Thank you. And all the seniors appreciate that, too. Thank you. Kindly received. Thank you. A motion to take up. Oh, wait. Oh, we're still waiting for one. I was looking if we should go back. But motion to take up item nine. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, Item nine was filed by Councilor Reagan. Order that an ordinance be created to establish a public process for approving the installation of raised crosswalks that include input from safety departments and the public and determination from engineering. Um, Councilor Reagan. Thank you. So ironically, I filed this order because 
two of the raised crosswalks that some people are very happy about on Homestead Avenue have been found not to meet state warrants and that it's problematic for the city. So out of an abundance of caution to try to avoid something like this happening in the future, because this happened between, and this is going back two or three engineers, and we've had a lot of changes in that department, as we all know. So it got started under one, it continued under another, and it actually got implemented under the current event. But when the current engineer looked at it, she discovered the problem that I've articulated. So in speaking with her about it, and also because it does have a direct impact on the close neighbors, just like speed humps do, she recommended that we would adopt an ordinance similar to speed humps because they are almost the same, except they're not quite as sharp, I guess you might say, um, in their effect on the car. So this language that has been provided to the committee was sent to me from the engineer, and she suggested that it you know, would have a petition by the neighbors so that we make sure people do want it um, and that we make sure it's vetted by the various departments so that we don't end up in a situation where certain things aren't met and it just wasn't picked up. Um, I think there was a special program that this got funded through or something and that might be partly why that happened, but um, the idea is not to look back and point fingers, but rather to go forward and come up with a process so that we'll just be good going forward. Um, I'm not sure how often this will come up at this point. I don't think there's a lot of free money floating around for more of these, but I'm thinking as people become more familiar with them, they might request them. So that's why I filed the order and there you have it. Councilor Bartley? Yeah, what do you want to see done? I mean, do you, you want it to be in legal form? What, what, what is it you... Well... What do you want to do? Well, I wanted to check in with the committee, see if everybody would had a chance to look at it and see if they were good with it, and that if people are, then I would ask for it to be put in legal form or have legal give us any other feedback they think we should perhaps consider. This came from the engineer, so that would be ideal. Yeah, Mr. Chair, I, I think you, you always say this, right, uh, that it's good, good to have a clear process. So how is this, you know, so I'm going to make a motion that uh, that the law refers to the law department for to get into legal form that they work with Councilor Bacon and the city engineer to make sure the proper language is uh, drafted and get it before us for our next, next meeting. And I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Under, is there under discussion of that after that or no? No? Okay. So all in favor, I, I, I pass. Yep. Yep. All three. Okay. All right. So, so and it'll come back it, to it'll the go to committee? Legal, yeah, it'll go to yeah, legal it'll language, back to the language then come back to the committee, and then definitely. Then after that, if anything, it'll mm -hmm. we'll go after that. Thank you. So motion. Motion passes 3-0, just to be clear, Jeff, mm -hmm. in, case okay. I, in case I didn't make that yeah. clear. <laughs> oh, right, right. A motion to take up item 10. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All in, I mean, item 10 was filed by Councilor Vacant as well. Um, that the whole lip double the tax abatement for veterans as authorized by the HERO Act, expanding veteran property tax exemptions. Councilor Vacant. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the language for this is readily available. I did not include it with my order, but I know that it is... Um, I know it's readily available mm -hmm. um, now that it's been approved by the state, and it's just a matter of us updating our language to include it from the HEROES Act. So um, again, we would need it in legal form to update, and so if I could make a motion that we adopt this and request legal to put it in legal form and okay. come back to committee. Um, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 
A motion passes 3 0. Um, it will be sent to the. Um, um, Mr. Chairman? Oh, 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 oh. Um, it already passed, but I'm going to still entertain. Oh, we want to go home. I got you. Yes. Go ahead, Mr. Green. Just briefly, Mr. Chairman, I just want to go uh, absolutely completely in, in, in favor, and I support uh, Councillor Bacon's uh, motion here. Okay, Thank perfect. You. Thank you for that. Um, so that motion passed three zero, and it was being sent to the legal department for language, and it will come back at the mm -hmm. follow up meeting. Okay, motion to take up item eleven. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, Councillor, followed by Councillor Vacan, Jordan, and Puello at the this time. Order that a legal opinion be issued to clarify allowed uses of marijuana impact fee. For example, if order from a facility is a problem in the community, can the money be used for mitigation? Um, I brought this up because it is an oldie, um, and just because I guess to get it out, <laughs> get get done with it, and get through the process. Um, Councillor Vacan, if you want to speak on it. So I watched the finance meeting last night and there were a couple orders relative to this on it. And there was a statement made that our legal department wanted those orders to be addressed in executive session. Okay. So, which was a highly unusual thing to have happen after an agenda was posted. And as a city, I'm hoping that we are working to get these notices done as they need to be for the public so that people are aware of why things are going into executive session and not being taken up in public. But I don't know what to do with this right now. So I guess I would ask that we table it no. so we can get clarification relative to what's going on with the, all of that. Go ahead, second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Item table until we get more information regarding the um, executive session stuff. Um, uh, motion. Oh, did we voted on that, right? Yes. Okay. We did. Motion to take up item 12. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Item, filed, item 12 was filed by Councillor McGivern and Councillor Jenny Rivera. Order that DPW install a crosswalk for the city parking lot on North Canal Street across from GTI. I'm, I'm kind of not sure why that. Is this not a public safety item? I don't know. I might have. It might have got so snuck. We, we got to do the ordinance sure. for it. All right, yeah. perfect. So, um, I mean, Jenny's not here to speak on it. I guess I can kind of speak a little bit on it with regards to my own experience. With it, it makes sense to have the crosswalks for the people that are parking um, in that parking lot, which is a public parking lot. There is a significant amount of tra walking traffic going back and forth across that street, and then there is traffic like speeding going. Um, on North Canal Street, usually because that's an industrial road. Um, it's not something that's normal that you see people walking on that street, but now that there's more business going along there and dispensary is starting to fill in the space, there's more foot traffic. Um, but, <coughs> Councillor Reagan, go ahead. Can we use that was my idea. money for that? My idea is that. Because um, to me, that, that would seems be the request. directly related. That would be the request for me when I saw this order, but um, go ahead, Councillor Wardley. Would, would it make sense? have a raised crosswalk now so now we just have a crosswalk here to have a raised one do, would you think that makes sense I, I i wouldn't be against that myself personally but i think that be, the engineers might say something because the, tr the train track is right there so you, before that is going to be another you know what i'm saying it'll be a stop stop okay so I'll, but i don't know if we I'll could make put the motion the that we approve this and then we have the city engineer put it up do the uh, drawings and put it up legal form for us so we can review it the next meeting. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. The motion passed 3-0 uh, to be sent, uh, approved, and then sent for engineer, the city engineer to do the drawings and bring it back to us at next potential meeting. Okay. Motion to take up items 13, 14, I guess. And 16 is a package. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, item 13 was filed by Councilor Gibberner. Um, Part constituent request order that the handicap parking sign be removed from in front of Dwight, 1205 Dwight Street by the new owner, Anthony Case. Item 14 uh, filed by Councilor Gibberner. Um, per resident request, please remove handicap sign from 204 Oak Street for Ms. Josephine Rivera as she no longer needs it. 
Mm -hmm. um, and then item 16 was filed by Councilor Ocasio, um, ordered that DPW remove the handicap signs at the following um, don't, she's at town at locations 588 South. And then Councilor Ocasio, let me know which one is the one that you don't want removed. Because I remember you mentioned one of them. So I'm, I'm mentioning the ones to be removed are 588 South Summer Street, apartment 1613, um, Osario. All right. And then okay. there, and then wow. there's, go ahead. And then there's De Jesus, 588 South Summer Street. And then Morales, 586 South Summer Street, apartment 1512. And then Wilfredo Lorenzi, 584 South Summer Street, apartment 1441. And then D Diane Pierre, 580 South Summer Street, 2L. All the residents no longer live at these locations. I, um, um, on the 580, 588 uh, apartment 1613, um, he had moved out of the 588 South, South Summer Street uh, de Jesus. Um, she's deceased. Um, the, the 586, uh, Emma, she went to Puerto Rico uh, with Fredo on 584. Uh, he he moved to Springfield, and Diane on 580. She's no longer there. I don't know where, where she's located, but so then we remove all of these, right? But, okay. But I just want to make real clear um, exactly which ones to be removed because uh, Jeffrey said there's only three there, and and I mean when he googled the, the Google Map thing, so but it's it's six, you know it's yeah. like. Yeah, five on one side and one on one other side. So the yeah, one on the we we have another order that you and Mr. B uh, Councilor Bartley filed around trying to figure out how we can figure out all of that stuff because it does. And I've been saying that since my fir when I first came on yep. that the handicap thing kind of has to be figured out because it feels like it, yeah, there's a lot going on and it's a lot going on. Um, but these five here remove. Yes, sir. Okay. So we're removing 13, 14, and 16. Um, and then I believe the review measurements and handicap part. Or so far, and Jeff, everything is correct with regards to 16, right? So um, just after I, I clarified things with Councilor Casio uh, before the meeting today, uh, the one that's next to Morgan School is is going to remain, um, okay. and then there's it, it appears there are just two more sets of measurements that I need to get from the DPW that would correspond with a, a couple more of the signs that are there. So, um, if, if if you're willing to approve all of them, I can make sure before the council meeting that I get the measurements for the other two. Okay. Right. So then I'll, I'll make I a go. motion to approve all of the removals as requested. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Thank you. Aye. All in, um, the motion was approved. Uh, the item 13, 14, so and 16 how, will be removed. So how much longer do we want to wait? I mean. Do you want to go to the end? I would figure because these are, I feel like these items are not going to take okay. that long. Okay. Just keep going. Motion to take up item 17. 15. Oh, 15. Oh. Yeah. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, item 15 was filed by uh, Councilor Bart Bartley and or in collaboration with Cartler, uh, Councilor Ocasio. Um, the city determined a more efficient manner to remove handicapped disability signs. Perhaps a database should be maintained by the clerk. City addresses with handicapped disability signs in front of a parcel's address should, maintain, should be maintained and made public. Further, for example, on an annual basis, each addressee which, with a such sign should be notified with must affirm whether or not the sign should remain. Refer to ordinance for follow-up, which is here now. Um, I'm glad that you guys filed this order because this is this kind of has been an issue since I've been here and probably since before the time, but Councillor Bartley, feel free to expand and then I'll hand it over to him. Yeah, I, I think you've, you, hit, you hit all the highlights, uh, Mr. Chair, and uh, I'm, I'm glad you brought this up and I'm glad that Carmen uh, and I put this together with so we'll just all three of us can take uh, some credit for that but it, it's just a case where it, it, I mean I'll, my, my motion is to take the verbiage I have here and refer to the law department and have them draft up some kind of a 
uh, ordinance language so that we can coordinate this um, appropriately. I don't have the exact language here, but I'll just throw out a couple thoughts. I'm hopeful that there might be other communities that have a, an actual process to remove signs as opposed to, uh, I mean, ours, we don't have a process. So that's something I will work on uh, and I will, I'll do my research too relative to this and I'll work mm -hmm. with a law department um, to, uh, to effectuate this. Real, second. Real quick before we go there, um, uh, Mayor, real quick, <laughs> was that uh, the, the handicap parking situation and someone being able to manage that um, we're trying to figure out how best to uh, divvy up, I guess, the work of trying to create a system and hear the recommendation. This is just a, a shot, I think, just to try to start the process is that it lands with the clerk. Um, and I know that right now they, it would be difficult for them to just change everything of how they're doing. But I, I think was I didn't get to see the whole parking study thing that we did. Would something like this be incorporated into that? Or would have been somehow, no. So you, we're looking to see if we can draft something that helps better manage handicap parking yes. in town, right? Right. Okay, it's a great idea. Um, what we just have to figure out, look at what other cities and towns are doing. If there is anything, mm -hmm. if we can find a template model, we can pick at. If one doesn't exist, and we really want to do one. We'd have to craft one from scratch. Something I think we can work on. All right. I just and I only say it just because I know that the clerk and, and if it falls under the clerk's compartment, it does. But if it falls under parking yeah. or whoever, like it, it's yeah. just for it to be functional in a way where if Carmen goes and says, "I got five stop uh, handicap signs on my street," they can all say, "We know whose they are," or "We think we know whose they are." Whereas right now, it, it's. A little more difficult than that. Councillor Reagan, and then I'll recognize Councillor. Thank you. So thank you, one suggestion I would make is because every one of these has an ordinance behind it, so they are listed, you know, as part of the ordinances with, with the locations, mm -hmm. and not commenting on the workload, but just as a logical matter, the clerk is the holder of all records, right. and so it would make sense right, that. Makes sense. that it would be in that office mm -hmm. if somebody wanted to see it, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, so that's just a thought. Mm -hmm. But I think if we send it over to legal, and as the mayor said, if there's some templates out there, no, that's we can Thank you. hopefully get it done. Councilor Ocasio. Um, the reason why I had um, brought this up was because of all the handicapped things that are there, plates that are there, also that I have to had to do the full work myself, you know, try to figure out who moved, who passed away, go to the landlord, try to figure all this stuff out. So and I couldn't think of and you know how to do stuff. So I reached out to um, David Bartley, the council said about um, David Bartley for some type of help and assistance. Um, it will make it get easier if there's uh, some type of debt or anything that mm -hmm. is gonna like narrow it down where mm -hmm. we know where these who these individuals are, where they live and if they're there or not, because they're just taking up space and people that are not handicapped, you know, we don't have anywhere to park because it's like five sometimes some in some of these streets there's eight of That's them, you know, so it's taking up space and really nobody's there. Mm -hmm. And also to explain to um, there's another issue behind that that the officers are really like if you park you can park anywhere as long as you have the plate right mm -hmm. okay but there's one some certain ones they have the black numbers on it that the officers I mean those are not legal anymore so the officers here in Holyoke are like people that they have handicapped tags they are parking there they're telling them that they have to move because that don't belong to them so yeah I'm having a big problem as I hold you up due to these handicapped um, signs okay. and you know it needs to be really addressed thank you thank you um, Jeff is that hand raised new or that's old yeah I just I, I wanted to offer just something that I found that I think is relevant to this 
Sure. Um, so some months ago, um, when discussion of, of the, the snow emergency ordinance was being discussed, I noticed in that ordinance that there's language there that says modifications to this section may be made from time to time per order of the mayor or the superintendent of the Department of Public Works. So I wanted to mention that, that there's precedent is in our ordinances for somebody else to be able to update them without going through the ordinance committee. Oh, so it's... If, um, doesn't mean we can't. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't mean we can't, but it just feels like we're, we would be doing another rule on top of a rule. But hey, just in case. Uh, Councilor Bartley. Yeah, I, I, I think I think we saw a good good discussion. You know, we don't have to kill ourselves, but I'll, I'll just throw out a couple of thoughts, and I appreciate Jeff adding that because it, it, it does add some perspective. We have a disability commission. Um, th they need to have a role in this. Uh, I think Linda said we we have a we have a city clerk that issues the the permits. I, I think they, the the clerk needs to have a role. I did speak with Brenna before I filed this, and she was mm -hmm. um, receptive to helping out. So so that there's that. In terms of um, in terms of process, my expectation would be since there's a database, uh, since they have a sign, that every so often, whatever that might be, every year, every three years, whatever it is, there's a, a letter or an email or some contact goes out to the person with where it is. If they respond, yes, we need it, fine. If they respond, no, we don't need it, fine. If they don't respond at all, well, then, then we have a little bit of a glitch in the system. We got to figure out how that works, but. Uh, you know, you can't put the burden on the count ward counselor or the disability commission. I mean, knocking on doors. I mean, that's just it's going to get silly. But, but, um, but parking is going to be tight as Carmen. That's why she's doing this. I mean, she's running around like Florence Nightingale, going on, you know, trying to save save the day down there in South Summer. But I mean, it's like, is that really the best use of her time? I, I, I maybe it is, but I, I, it just really, it's like there, there's going to be something a little bit better, better way to do this. So something a little more formalized. It's never going to be perfect, but at least we get you know, something to have a to have a process, and that's really what this is about. Thank you, Thank you Councilor Barley, and then Mayor. Councilor, I don't want to muddy it any further, but just bring to your attention the parking advisory board and the ordinance. It does read. And I and I learn this something new every time I read this. Uh, the advisory board shall advise the city council as to policies for the off-street parking system including parking meters, parking facilities, parking garages, alleyways, and handicap parking, including any fees that may be charged, conduct hearings, no, conduct hearings on on-street parking issues and prepare recommendations and make inquiries into properties that may be suitable for off-street parking facilities. That's in there. I mean, whatever we decide to do, we may want to- That's the advisory a, board, right? This is the parking advisory yeah, the board. Parking, that that's the advi parking advisory board that Tessa assigned me to. That's the one that consists of nine members. You're on it too, Council The board. ordinance identifies who the members are. <laughs> 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 yeah, we do. Man. Whatever we decide to do. But it has to come to ordinance. <laughs> yeah, well, this is ordinance. interesting. The, the <laughs> conduct hearings part is interesting. That'll probably relieve Lisa from doing parking hearings. If I, I let her know this, it'll be us doing it'll the parking. Be the, <laughs> it'll stuff. be the advisory board. Okay. <laughs> that sounds crazy. <laughs> it, that's kind of exceeding advisory, but okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> a little bit of recommendation, and then we do. Well, I, I'm going to say that for just for a motion, I, I think this has to be tabled. But I think we should refer to, to legal to try to draft up some language. I thought we had that motion. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah, we were. Let's do that, and then I'll recognize. So we just have to vote on it. The yeah. counselor, Tessa first, because it's her first time, and then I go back to you, Cut. I was just, I was just gonna make a comment. Um, I know that the parking advisory committee report mentioned a parking a parking authority as well as a possibility is that something i wonder if other cities do it that way i don't know i'm just throwing it out there i know that that's something that one of the recommendations from the report indicated the creation possibly of a parking advisory or parking authority hmm. so that's just food for thought that's my mm -hmm. thank you thank you uh, councillor ocasio um 
this is how desperate uh, the situation is, that people are taking the handicap signs, pole and all, and removing them, okay? <laughs> I had to call DPW a few times and drag these poles to my porch so they can go pick them up in my porch so nothing is broken in well, the Well, that will make it legal. <laughs> this is getting crazy. All right. so that's why I'm Thank you. <laughs> Thank you on the motion. Uh, uh, aye. Aye. All right, okay, uh, so the motion passes for it to go to legal language, and then come back and we'll have more conversations about it. I'll work on it, too. That was item 15. Um, motion to take up item 17. Second. Uh, item 7, oh, sorry, all in favor? All right. All right. Uh, item 17 was filed by Councilor Gibner, order the DBW install a handicap sign at 199 Beach Street for Pablo... Gonzalez, Handicap Placard, PL2280794. This was tabled before, and I got to find. We have some paperwork, but it's not, I don't see that it's checked off from disabilities. Uh, Jeff, um, can you clarify on that just in case? Yeah, the, the D Disabilities Commission actually denied this uh, okay. because there was there's another sign already near the address and Councillor Givner had it tabled at the last meeting because she was going to follow up with the resident. Okay, perfect. Okay. So... So I guess it, it would be safe to make a motion to comply? deny it based on the... Or, or to accept the Disabilities Commission recommendation. Yeah, I'll, I'll second that and just under discussion. Oh, uh, right. So we can send this to City Council, but Council Gibner says, well, hold on a second, then we can just hold on a second. Yeah, and send it right, but yeah. We'll do that. All in favor then? Aye. 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 Let's, Motion to take up. Let's go back to the other ones. Because I don't want to keep the mayor and Rory any longer. Yeah, well, that's what I was thinking. Not yet. You were right. I didn't really think about that at the moment. It's just it yeah, well, now not. another 15 yeah. minutes went by, right? <laughs> All right, so My motion bad. take up item four. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, item four again was filed by Councilor McGee, ordered that the position of, uh, of chief administrative and financial officer be created and, and added to Schedule A. Um, we met several times. Uh, there are some questions, um, and now we have uh, with us the mayor and also uh, the city treasurer, Rory, with us um, for any, I mean, to answer any questions around the, the language or any other stuff. And I know that I remember that the last time there was questions around the education piece, the but managing of the education budget, and then where roles would lie, um, how certain things were. Um, so if any counselors want to kind of follow up with those questions now, uh, feel free. Um, but uh, go ahead, Councilor Bacon. So it was Councilor McGrath-Smith who had a lot of the questions, and they were about the scope of the job because it said all the city departments and the school department, et cetera, et cetera. So I don't want to speak for her, but. Councilor Bartley. Do you guys want to just speak anyways, just in case? Because yeah, come in. in. This is your stuff, man. Yeah, come in. I guess uh, for me here, uh, we've tabled it a couple times. I'm not sure I want to continue tabling it. So uh, we can start the process of either voting to move it forward with a positive um, uh, refer uh, referral or with the negative one, whichever way you want to put it, however it's said. But um, now that we have the mayor and, and Rory here, uh, any questions around um, <coughs> The, the process or just how consolidation or any of those processes are going to work, I think it would make sense 
if you guys could walk us through some of the ideas that you guys have around it. So that way, in case um, Councilor McGrath Smith can come back and review for her questions, yeah. um, yep. they can start a foundation, you know what I mean? I think there were some, some, some questions as far as um, uh, who's responsible to who, almost like the organizational structure um, of the, how does the position of CAFO fit within the greater organizational structure? So we did uh, draft or put together an org chart to, to kind of better explain what that looks like. Um, this one is the which one? Rory has it here. This is, this is, uh, oh, thank you. No, this is, this one you gave me is not the as is. This is if we consolidated. This one here is, this one here is, thank you. If council is to just, say it in the microphone. Yeah, so um, I know we've had a couple of times to talk about this, and um, thank you again for having us in. This is, you know, something that's been talked about for a number of, of years. Um, and so this organizational chart, because um, as the council knows, um, right now with the treasurer uh, situation still not completely resolved, it's a separate conversation for a separate committee. Um, this is what it would look like uh, if the council were to put the CAFO, uh, approve the CAFO position to be created. Um, so I do have a separate one um, that assumes the treasurer position um, and collector's position is consolidated. Uh, so that's a separate one here, uh, but this uh, this this one that we put together um, is based on the DLS uh, recommendation updated uh, for the way things are structured today. Um, so that's this first one here. Well, I think the assessor one should be with the auditor. No, no, the, the auditor was standalone, the assessor. Um, so one thing that I want to note, because I know this has come up, I, I put a little chart in here, a little... Um, little key the off key. to the side oh, uh, that shows appointed by council and confirmed by council. Yeah. So what you'll notice is the auditor, the tax collector, the assessor. Yeah, I've got, okay, I've got some yeah, for you, Jeffrey. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> sure. Um, this is the, this is the one we're discussing right now. Um, oh, Meg McGrath is on yep. Zoom. Before you, can, before you continue, I want to I want to oh. recognize Councillor Matt McGrath Smith, um, uh, and now I have to also do the for the purpose of the meeting or motion to take a roll call vote that for the purposes of this meeting we would be applicable to all motions to remove an item from the table, place items on the table, package items, or suspend the rules unless there is an objection. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. All right, awesome. So, uh, Meg, this, uh, Rory has a sheet for us that I think uh, Jeff is going to scan and send to you. Um, that kind of has like somewhat of a ideal organizational structure if things were in a perfect world, it seems. Um, Great. But Rory, what agenda gonna, item are we currently on? On four. Thank you. Um, we kind of did a, a lot of them already. That's <laughs> okay. fine. So. We just went back to four now, um, and then we'll do five after. I think we did five already, but for the most part, four right now is where we're at. Yeah, we still have five. Too. Okay. So, Rory, if you would like to continue, unless, Meg, you want to start off with your questions, so that way. No, I don't have any questions at this time. Okay, okay great. Perfect. Um, so just to continue uh, where I left off, um, so this, what you have in front of you right now um, is, is an organizational chart that essentially um, shows the way things would be if the CAFO position was created with the treasurer and collector still being uh, separate because of the 
excuse me, election and some additional things that would need to happen down the road. The important things to note are that, uh, and I know this has come up uh, in question of the council, uh, who's appointed by the council, who remains appointed by the council, who is confirmed by the council. Um, so what you'll see here is the assessor, the tax collector, the auditor, those three positions that are currently um, in the charter appointed by the council remain as such. There, there is no conversation about changing that. Um, the chief procurement officer, the personnel administrator um, uh, are appointed by the mayor but confirmed by the council. Um, and the CAFO as well would be appointed by the mayor and confirmed by the council. Um, so that's, that's what this is. I know that, that there was some discussion about wanting to see an organizational chart. The mayor and I uh, spoke briefly with uh, Councilor Rivera, uh, who had asked us to try to put one together to bring it tonight to, to have, because he knew that was something the committee wanted. So we went back to the 2015 uh, DLS guide, which everybody should have a copy of. Um, and they did have an organizational chart in there. At the time, um, there were some structural differences. They were making some other recommendations um, related to IT. Staffing was a, a little bit different, so it didn't make sense to just show you that. Um, so we updated that with the way things are currently structured today. So this isn't adding any positions. This is, this is the way um, the offices essentially function. Uh, the only thing I will note is um, the, in the tax collector's office, um, you'll see two collection clerks uh, and the treasurer's office, two payroll specialists. Just keep in mind the, the treasurer and the collector currently share a position. Um, for the purposes of this exercise, we just put it under the, um, under the umbrella of the collector because a lot of that uh, individual's job, uh, they're stationed at the front counter, they're doing a lot of the collection uh, work at the front counter in addition to supporting uh, some of the other treasurer's functions. So I just, in case there was a question about that, that's why um, uh, it's put together uh, this way. Um, and yeah, so that's that's what this is. Um, Thank you. Um, questions? Councillor Reagan. So I didn't raise this question, but it was raised at the last meeting that in the job description it has this new individual overseeing all departments, including the school department. And historically, the school department has been completely separate and has its own budget that we don't control. So how would that work? If yep, yep, you were absolutely correct. So when we say we, the, the school department is its own budget, they have their own CFO over there, their own business manager mm -hmm. and, um, and process uh, for moving things around and approving um, we coordinate with the school department with, you know, as far as the financing and, and deficits closing the end of the year and, you know, preparing for the new fiscal year, all of that gets coordinated um, between, well, right now my Our office, auditor, the auditor, right? and together with the, uh, the uh, CFO of the school district. So, and, and if it says responsible for overseeing directly, then that's something that we need to change in that job description. But this person wouldn't control, right, the responsibility in the school department, this finances, because you're right, they do have, they are their own, they are their own function. Yeah, um, the words that are used are implements and maintains uniform systems, controls, and procedures for all financial activities in all departments, and then it lists all those yeah so so it's pretty yeah you know, and just to expand a little bit and, and maybe clarify um, because this is one of those situations where I think uh, kind of two things are true at once right the, the schools are their own entity they have their own budget they have their own CAFO and you know God willing we're gonna be out of receivership soon and they're gonna even have more control over over what is happening uh, within the school department however uh, the reality is, and this is what I think the description speaks to, and however the council may want to uh, amend it uh, to, to make it clearer, uh, I believe everybody uh, is, is all in favor of. Right now, um, on a daily basis, my office, the auditor's office, 
the purchasing office. We're working with the school department every day. Mm -hmm. um, the purchasing, op the CPO, the chief procurement officer, is the chief procurement officer for the school department. Um, the treasurer's office, the payroll function, the banking function, right. all of that is, is being done through, through my office in conjunction with some folks at the school department. The uh, auditor's office, the same exact thing, all the GL, uh, she maintains the, the GL for the school department in addition to the city. Right, but that wouldn't change. No, it, w it wouldn't. This is my point, is that it wouldn't change. So the, 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 where you see some of that language that references the school department but talking about the uniform. But it would fall under the CAFL. Mm -hmm. But it would fall under the CAFL. Yeah, yeah. So, no, no, the, when we, to, to counselor, what counselor, Vic, I want to be very clear here. Mm -hmm. The auditor's functions remain separate. That's in this organizational chart. That's always been the case. Well, when we talk about yeah, uniform yeah. financial um, functions, right, if we talk about uniform policies, making sure that cash receipts are all being handed right. over the same way, that debt is being issued the same way, that accounts payable checks are being processed the same way, that is something that the CAFO would help quarterback and oversee. And, and that is kind of making something uniform across both sectors. Right now, those things happen, but they happen in a little bit more of a, a you know, siloed approach. But we have uh, weekly meetings and monthly meetings between the school finance and the city finance in addition to our day-to-day -day work. So there is a lot of, there is a lot of overlap. Um, the idea here is that they, this person would help oversee all of the kind of city side and then also help work with uh, um, work with the schools to make sure we have a uniform process we're actually we've found out recently we're one of the only municipalities in all of Massachusetts that has two separate accounting systems for our school department in our city and we're working on a project right now to merge those two but they would still have their own um, you know uh, accounts the auditor would still have their role, um, but you know, to be able to quarterback a project like that, it really takes somebody with this uh, kind of level of knowledge and expertise. Thank you. Sounds highly bureaucratic to me. But Thank you. That's me. <laughs> Thank you. Um, any other uh, questions? The, the only, I mean, I would right. like currently, right? This this falls under the direct responsibility uh, of the mayor. And it's fine, I take it on, I do the best I can with what I know, but the next mayor might not know anything about municipal finance, mass general laws, and we'll have, you know, a lot of uh, the monthly meetings that Rory, Mr. Treasurer alluded to were the monthly finance team meetings that I've been able to put together and cross, facilitate where we are, what our, um, scope is for the next, you know, our short long-term goals, making sure that um, we're following our policies, procedures. And so this is just, again, the goal is to strengthen controls, limit liability, reduce uh, potential harm to local resources, eliminate mistakes by having someone that has much um, stronger um, uh, knowledge uh, in this area that can cross facilitate and, and protect our resources and it's extremely important obviously as you can see in this chart that we keep the auditor as a completely separate because those two have to work together as a checks and balance system um, and right now the auditor does more than being the auditor she's kind of like you know um, uh, trying to you know do the work of the um, CFO without um, and, and doing the best she can, um, the best that the auditor can, um, when really they should be diving into our work, just kind of auditing and making sure things, you know, are 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 straight. So those two would essentially work. Got to keep them separate. It's like the treasurer and the accountant. That role has to be separate. But in this case, if we're talking about capital overseeing, and then letting those two check each other's work, balance the work, and, and improve our annual audits, the ones that the external auditors do, currently highlighting many deficiencies that go back probably three decades um, because of uh, 
the political management of our city resources. Um, so it, I, I think that, I mean, I know it's, you said it's just you. I just want to, you know, I, since we're here having a conversation, I just want to make sure that, you know, it's an, we're as informed as possible in the benefit that this potentially brings um, uh, and, and better manage what's, what's happening here, no matter who's no matter who's in here, who's the mayor, who's the city council, um, that our, our ship stays in order and not go backwards. Thank you, uh, Councillor Murphy Rambaletti. Thank you, Councillor Rivera. Um, the, what I just, I wanted to thank you both for putting this together because it does, I'm a visual learner and this is very helpful. It also helps, um, I know that there's a lot of folks on the council who have had concerns about the balance of power and whether or not we would be, um, as the council, we would be losing power. Um, and I just, I know it doesn't say it here because the change hasn't, there hasn't been a change yet, but the, the treasurer position we did vote would also be appointed by the council mm -hmm. um, or by the mayor with council approval. Is that correct? If I'm remembering what we all finally agreed on, it was that. So I just think it's worth noting that I think this still gives us a lot of oversight. Sorry, correction. Yeah, thank just you. Council appointment. Council appointment. Just straight up council appointment. That's even, even better. Um, that's a lot of financial oversight on our end as far as appointments go. And it still provides the mayor with um, the ability to appoint um, his own CAFO. So, I mean, just after all the discussions that have happened and trying to find a middle ground, I think this brings us to that. Um, so I just want to thank you for mapping it out for me, for us. Um, and this is, just reiterate, this is based on what the state has recommended. So I'm looking forward to seeing this hopefully go through soon. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any other questions or comments? If there aren't any, I would like to entertain a motion that we adopted, unless there's any, and maybe go with the same language that has been put together that's already in their packet, unless anyone else has any questions or concerns and would like to make any amendments to the language. I'll, I'll make a motion we forward it to the city council. I got a problem with that. Second. Do I hear a second? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear what he said. Uh, uh, Are we forwarding it without a recommendation? Well, I'll, I'll, whatever. I'll, I'll just I, I would want to forward it with the recommendation, but that's up to you guys. Yeah, whatever you I, want. Yeah, we're in charge. I'll, I'll, I'll just say forward it uh, uh, with the recommendation to the full city council. Like, yeah, All right, perfect. So then, Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I'm a no. And, okay, so that's 3-1. I think I have to do the roll call. Right. Okay. Ro oh, yeah, we're online. Roll call vote. Thank you for that, Mayor. Uh, Councilor yes, Meg McGrath-Smith? Yes. Uh, Councilor David Bartley? Yes. Uh, Councilor Linda Vacan? No. Uh, Councilor Israel Rivera? Yes. Uh, it passes 3-1. Um, and it will be on the next full council agenda. Thank you, guys. And then we have item five. Oh. Motion, take up item five. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, item five was filed by Councilor Jordan, order the City Council review and adopt the mayor's proposal for the City Council's financial policies by ordinance. Uh, we tabled this one because we wanted the, the f as much as the committee here present to be able to have the conversation around this. So I think uh, well, you had mentioned a couple things earlier, Linda, about it. Briefly, it wasn't. You mean in a couple of meetings ago? I think so. Well, yeah. so my only hesitation about it, I mean, in general, I think they're really good. And so my <laughs> conflict in looking at the policy was the fact that it always assumed a CAFO. So my problem with the whole thing is that we have had no efficiencies and we're building a bigger bureaucracy with people that can't afford the taxes they're paying now that are gonna go up yet again. So my hesitation on the finances was because they all were filled with CAFO. So I'd wanted the language to say CAFO or mayor so that it, 
the policies would be consistent with what is now, mm -hmm. and they could be flexible if something should happen in the future to change so that it would be workable right. either way. So that was, I was just looking for that right, right. because the policies themselves I think are good. And I know Mayor ran on being finance guy and cleaning up the city. And I support you in that. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't support making it a quarter of a million dollar mayor's office. <laughs> That's all. But I, on the concepts, I'm totally no, it's with all you. Good. All good. Um. <laughs> Councilor, I mean, Mayor, unless but there's other questions. that was my hesitation, first. so that's all. No, uh, Mayor Garcia? Yeah, I think that, like, I mean, you get deeper into the debate. There's argument that having a CAFL can potentially, um, uh, you know, save taxpayer resources and because of, you know, the day-to-day -day stuff. And, right, I did run on that, and this was part of that. It included looking at our... I often refer to, to it as an antiquated form of government, and so just kind of looking into that and seeing what we can do differently that fits Hoyok. I did put in the, the policies manual um, where everywhere where it says CAFO, as you know, uh, I don't have it in front of me. I think I said something to the tune of um, under the direction of the mayor or mayor's mm -hmm. designee or something like that. And just to the, for the council to know that whether or not this is codified the the policies are being enforced through through my directive anyways and that's going to be there as long as i'm there a mayor can come and change the policy if he wants to um but the idea here was to codify it and make it law so that when there is change you know the council is they have to come here and you have that control and oversight to make sure that the mayor is sticking to the responsibilities of the day-to-day -day that Mass DOR and Mass General Law expects those departments to. So in the policies, there's strategies identified to meet the laws, and we want to make sure all the hours that everybody is putting in, whenever there's new leadership, that doesn't get untangled and go backwards. Right, that's what happened with an old HR manual that disappeared. Oh, you know, right. that was done years ago. So when that so person comes you. in, that manual is there. New counselors come in. There's a clear guidance on what the systems are that we put in place. And, you know, there's that, um, that level of transparency in the both forms of government. So that everyone's working together and understands that that's, that's the, the guiding principles that we've all adopted to make sure that day-to-day -day functionality continue to move forward and don't don't go backwards or change or anything. Uh, thank you, Mayor, and I'm sorry Minnie Mouse is talking. Um, <laughs> Councilor Vacan. Uh, through the chair to the mayor, and I, I do hear you on those things, and I am certainly a big fan on tightening up policies and procedures and protocols. I'm just having a hard time with our charter, that we have a strong mayor form, that it's in the mayor's hands, and adding that kind of financial burden to achieve a savings where I'm hearing saying that we're moving on the treasurer, but the whole treasurer question just got sent back to charter and rules. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's in limbo. Yeah. I'm not seeing the efficiencies. I'm, you know, I was hearing efficiencies. Now I'm hearing investment and future savings. Um, most added positions in growth and government never goes away once it's added and the tax burden only goes up. Now it's not to say other things can't improve within the context of it because we're writing off still over a million dollars on grants from what the last look I took. When we do the reconciliation, am I off on that? Mm -hmm. I think that was still over a million when we're, that we're writing off on grants because we're not following our, well we have an ordinance on that mayor but you know, we have a book this thick of laws. We're probably all breaking laws we don't even know are in the book. Well, but I'm just saying it's, so it's a good thing to have them. But on the other hand, you have to follow them for them to matter. There's, there's, you know, and so I, I would just say um, I hope we're going to move forward with the treasure in the way that we voted it because now I'm questioning that. And so I can't vote for something else while the first thing that we thought was done now isn't done either. So that's where I'm stuck. I'm in a bit of a catch-22. No okay. ill will, just no. that's where I'm at. Thank, thank, thank you for that. I, I think to kind of to speak a little bit to 
moving two things at the same time within yeah. within <laughs> the within the process. I, I think that 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 is the norm in government too. At the same time, um, you can't do one without the other, and sometimes you have to try to do two things as you're walking along the process so that way when you when you build out the processes they can both be ready at the same time it doesn't you're always work speaking out. to me no i'm just speaking in general terms in general terms for the people for just generalities um and i, I think that <clears throat> we're we're trying to figure this out here right um just to go in line with um this particular <clears throat> financial policies pieces what is it going to look for the future, right? I understand that for you, the, the, the misclarification, the, the, the thing was um, that the wording, right? But if the wording is edited, then I think the most important piece for us is trying to figure out how we create a system that becomes consistent. And I, I know you didn't like the efficient piece, but we're eventually we work to a point where we are efficient. Um, and I think that with codifying some of these policies aside from the CAFO piece it makes sense that we have a system in place that and whoever's in room one has to follow the system regardless of the matter um, but again it's neither here or there I guess if we want to follow it or not it just seems that it would make sense to have it codified I don't Anybody else just before I recognize the mayor again? Just make one more comment. Sure. So it's just a little ironic to me. I'm not against codifying financial mm -hmm. policies, but when we want to codify other policies, oh. it becomes fraught with, you know, individual circumstances like around HR and stuff like that. And I do understand the distinctions. So, but I'm, I'm fine with codifying policies. And I'm fine with doing two things at once. I just don't like one going forward and the other feeling like it's going backwards. I don't, That's I what don't I'm disagree. On. <laughs> I don't disagree. I don't disagree. But I think That's the situation awesome. is out of some people's hands. Making sausage, yeah, as we say. Of course, right. Mm -hmm. um, Josh, I mean, Mayor Garcia. I just want, I, I mean, I don't know if, I mean, because there were some things shared about grant deficits and perhaps a new order can be filed and we can have a conversation about the free cash certification and deficits identified in the schedule that to so that counselors better understand where we are and and not make assumptions that work is not getting done because there's it's there's a lot of and on that subject the conversation is complex that probably worth untangling so we better understand so that we don't make these assumptions as if things are going backwards or the work is not getting done because when it comes to the free cash certifications and deficits scheduled, reflected in the schedule. You know, that also, when we got that free cash certificate, they were only able to certify a dollar amount knowing that we needed something. They didn't certify the, the whole thing. So th some of those deficits there, you know, they're still clearing up. And then also there's, when you're talking about grants, they're not all lined up with our fiscal year when right. you do reimburse so there's there's things right right so but i don't just to clarify my comment about going backwards wasn't relative to that it was relative to the process and the treasurer got it it wasn't about that okay good <laughs> just say it i just been working we've all been working hard it wasn't about to, that it was no it was about and, the and process then, and the consolidation that's all yeah. so just i guess on this order i'm at the will of the body if we want to move forward with the adjustments that you requested with regards to the language or uh, city treasurer uh, go ahead Rory um, I was I was just gonna say um, when you look at this this is this is a I refer to this document all the time I mean this is if we paid somebody to put some, this together, whether it's codified or not, just the, the cost alone the, to, for us, the, it's a roadmap for us mm -hmm. to be able to use. So I just, I don't want that point to get lost in, in some of it, but you raise a lot of really great points, uh, Councillor Vacan, and I think, and, and I actually think it was, um, if I remember correctly, Councillor Bartley at a previous meeting um, was kind of, uh, made a joke about he couldn't wait to see how this was put into legal form because it is 
like an octopus, right? Its tentacles are gonna go out through the entire code of ordinances, depending on how this actually uh, gets handled. There are, if you look at this document and, and whatever the body does tonight, um, obviously it's the will of the body. When you look at the document, um, it's broken out into a few different sections. And I would, uh, and this is something that came up, I know that this is something that Councillor Jourdain and the mayor spoke about at that meeting in June, the conversation about how capital stabilization is spent, money going in, money going out, mm -hmm. two thirds votes, things like that. Mm -hmm. And the mayor had said, that, make sure that gets put mm -hmm. into this. Mm -hmm. If you look at this, if you look at this document, there's the, the first section is really what I think is the lowest hanging fruit to be codified, because that is very specific, right? Without going through it, it's saying things like, if you get this much, if you get free cash, this much has to go there, has right. to go there, has to go there. That it doesn't matter who the CAFO is or the mayor, whatever. That's just, that's baked into the cake moving forward. We know that's what it is. And if we wanna move money out, we have to so, do it. So, so hang on yeah. just a second, if I may, because I think they're trying to respond to me, but. The, I would have voted for this four months ago. All I was looking for it to say was mayor slash CAFO yeah. because we didn't have the CAFO. Mm -hmm. That was it. I read the entire document. I'm good with it. That's great. That's all I was looking for because we were putting the cart before the horse saying CAFO and we mm -hmm. didn't have a CAFO. So all I was looking for was mayor slash CAFO. The either or yeah. that's it mm -hmm. that's all that's and then I, I was good with it that's why I, that's why i said right now with the language like that's editing it. it so it could say whatever it is so that it, it makes it so it, i will make a motion to it recommend the financial policies if if it's acceptable to just say mayor slash cafo where it says cafo um and someone can second that is there a second but, 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 second. Just, and i think under discussion real quick because meg has her hand raised and i i'm with that okay it's a motion. That's all. Yeah. Sign the floor. Uh, Councilor McGrath Smith. My question is more in line with what Rory was just talking about. Are we attempting to actually codify this individually into ordinance, or are we saying we're going to accept this as an appendix? I don't know if that was a question for. I think we could list it as yeah. an yeah. ordinance, the financial policy. I don't know. Well, and I, and I think that, so... Legal could... I see legal yeah, turn on this camera. Uh, welcome to the party, Mr. Bissonnette. <laughs> it's a pleasure, Mr. Chairman. You're arriving style with that wallpaper in the background. Older than you are, sir. Yeah, 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 yeah. I see you, I see you. <laughs> so could we attach it? Uh, so, yeah, can, could we... Uh, Attaching. So my question, solicitor, yeah. um, from the, through the chair, solicitor Bissonnette, my question is, um, would the goal here to be taking this sort of piece by piece and codifying it into existing ordinance, or would we be putting it in as an appendix, um, as an, you know, so that we don't have to do that sort of line by line change work? Actually, as an appendix, because it would be a complete document. Right. And it's very similar. Uh, on a specific subject similar to the zoning ordinance. Mm -hmm. I think it, it can stand on its own, uh, and I think it will reflect to DOR uh, the serious purpose uh, that the city has has taken what's been given to them and incorporated it, codified it, and uh, has begun using it to good effect. Thank you. So, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Um, that answers your question, Councilor. Mm -hmm. All yep. right, uh, Councilor Vegan. So, I'll just amend my order to say that the language change adopted in ordinance as recommended by legal as a full attached ordinance, and then legal will give us the proper form. So, we still have to send it to them to send it back to us. So awesome. That's my so, motion. Uh, yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 That's a four. Oh, we have to roll. do roll call. Oh, roll call. Okay, Councillor McGrath Smith. You don't want to come in person, so that's what you get. <laughs> oh, come yes. on, Minnie, cut it out. Okay, yes for Mag McGrath Smith. Councillor Dave Bartley. Uh, yes, Councillor Vacant. Yes. Yes, Councillor Israel Rivera. Is a yes, that's four zero. Um, and we are done with five. Uh, go back to item one, so we can approve the minutes. 
We, we didn't want to approve the we minutes without you guys. So, yeah. Well, we, we, we really welcome your presence here. I'll, I'll make a motion to, to approve them. I read all of them. They, they look good, so I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. I'll second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, roll call. Do we have to do a roll call for minutes? Uh, we'll do it just in case. Yeah, Council Member so. Grass Smith? Yes. Peace out, Mayor. I see you guys. Uh, yes, Councilor Dave Bartley, yes. Uh, Councilor Vacant, yes. Yes, and Councilor Rivera, yes. That's a 4 0 on item one. And then we're back down to. I, okay, motion to take up item 18. Second. Yes. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Item 18 was filed by Councilor. Wait, uh, item passed, and then item 18 passed right, by. In 2021. Yeah, by Council McGee in 2021. Order that the City Council amend Ordinance 269 by striking section. I can't talk to you right now. By striking section G2 from the ordinance, the section states no employees of the city shall simultaneously serve on the City Council during their time of employment. Um, I'll make a motion to give this leave to withdraw. Uh, I don't know. I think this one we might want to have a conversation about just because this r brings me back to well, when, we can still have a conversation. Yeah, I can get a second. Uh, uh, no, we can do that. Um, <laughs> we can still have a conversation. Yeah, I'll, I'll bring up a point too. But go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. This okay. brings me back to uh, mm -hmm. the the situation that I had back in 2022, and I think this was filed to kind of like help. Uh, mitigate some of the situation that was happening then where I had to resign from my position because it was saying not to simultaneously serve as the city council as a city employee to as well um, but I'll entertain hearing what you guys have to say too as well uh, Councilor Reagan so from my point of view and I'm not saying nothing has ever been done wrong in the past because there has been a cited example and I think it existed actually when I first came on the council. But just because something was done incorrectly in the past doesn't mean it should continue to be done incorrectly. And I totally believe that for a sitting employee to serve as a sitting counselor is a clear cut conflict of interest, hard stop. And it's hard to know under which circumstances a thing, an item would be or wouldn't be, depending on which department the person works in. And if you get into a situation where <clears throat> the council is so, and for lack of a better word, well, I won't even use the word because it'll be taken wrong. But if, for example, a majority of the city councilors are city employees and don't laugh because most candidates have become city employees and they would then po potentially run again, you could very easily end up with a majority of a city council who are city employees. And that is just a self, a, 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 a recipe, let me say, let me not call the outcome, let me call the context, a recipe for self-dealing or creating a situation where there's so many on the council that have conflicts, everybody has to vote on everything anyway, and so there's no separation between the council and employees, and they are supposed to be separate. You know, I mean, they really are. And so I'm making the point, taking it to its furthest example, which I'm sure to your point has not been the case in the past, but it's because we had this ordinance and usually people knew what it meant. Mm -hmm. I know that there was one example, and, and there may be more. I'm aware of one example mm -hmm. where it didn't go that way. It should have, you know. Um, but it's sort of like what my mother used to say, two wrongs don't make a right. Mm -hmm. And it's not to say it couldn't be changed, but I think there is really good basis for why it exists, which is not an intention to harm an individual. And, and of course, of course. that has never been the basis of my position, although I was accused of it. That was not the why of why I took the position. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Councilor Bartley, you were Yeah, I, I'm just going to say that th there's a, another one on the table. I'm 33, kind of goes in hand in glove with this. Um, not, I mean, I don't have to make a motion, bring it up, but it's there. It kind of says, it goes a step further, uh, that we 
that we confirm no city councilor shall be a member of any other board or commission in the, in the city government. So not only are you not an employee, you, you're no longer, you, you can't be a board member. And I think that's, I think that's where we should be. I mean, if you run for this office, if you get elected to this office, the way it's set up is uh, separation, right? Separation of power. So I, I really don't think there should be an overlap with somebody on this board and somebody in the executive side of the government. So that's my take. Thank you. And I'll take up that one in the next meeting. Just because Yeah, no, yeah, whatever, man. Um, um, real about quick, this. Councillor yeah. McGrath Smith. So I actually, my main take on this is that I don't like it as written because I understand the, the purpose of wanting to control conflict of interest between city employees um, from departments that are under the control of the mayor or council. But I do believe that we should consider allowing employees who are, who are connected to the Holy Public School System to be able to serve on council. The reason why I think that is because um, there's significant distance between the school system and council. It is designed to be that way. And we could make it a requirement, although I would you know, hope anyone worth their salt would, would do the right thing, but we could make it a requirement that if you are an employee of Floyd Public Schools, you have to recuse yourself from all involvement with the joint committee or with any budgetary question involving the school system. But there's significant distance and I, I don't think that it's fair that we have all of these people who are like vibrant members of our community who are working in the school system and they couldn't be a part of government in this way when the work is very different. Um, we have a school committee for a reason, you know, to work alongside council. And I think that it would be very simple to be able to create, uh, you know, the qualifications that would make us feel confident that the conflict of interest had been resolved. Thank you. And then I would say before I recognize you guys, um, for, for me, where, where, where I stand on it is there, there is kind of state policy on this already, as it is. Um, and what we have kind of strengthens that, right? Um, the state policy kind of identifies and clarifies how it should be laid out. What we've done in this particular um, ordinance is make it a little stronger and stricter, which I'm not normally against, but I, I, I think, and, and I take myself out of the situation, I just think about how many people in the city of Holyoke, the Holy Public Schools employees that actually live within the city, um, and then their voices are kind of being shut out with regards to whether or not they want to step up and take a, a leadership role in their community. Um, it's, I, don't, I don't think that it's kind of a fair space for the employees, and and again, it's 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 got to be broken down um, in in a way where obviously, if you're in a leadership role, like if you're the superintendent of schools, right, you can't run for city council. Uh, if if you're an, in a, in a cabinet position, it would make it a little more difficult. Um, but I think that if you're a janitor, or if you're a, a para, or a teacher, or someone that's um, not that close to impacting. Um, or having the conflict arise on a regular basis, it would it would make sense to entertain that, especially with the the lower population that we have compared to other communities. If if you're saying that we had a population of 150 thousand people, then we'd say, yo, you know what? Then that makes sense because you have a larger pool to pull pull from. But here it's a little different when it comes to that. But um, that's my piece, um, Councillor Barty. Yeah, it's a good discussion. Um, I I think there's good perspectives there. I would just caution you on any of that, especially when the, you know that the mayor is the chairman of the school committee, then you're saying, well, it's, it's okay to have a school employee because they're distant from, and they can run for city council. Well, you know, they're, they're not that distant because, because of what I just said. So I, I think you're really playing with, uh, with fire right there. I, I don't really, then, then if you want to say, well, certain school employees can run, but other certain right, that school employees true. cannot run. Yeah. I, I think you're really dancing dancing around something that, that doesn't... But again, I, I hear your point because it would be nice to have a lot a bigger pool of candidates and there are some people that are really interested in running and participating and uh, and, and I think there's lots of ways to, to, to participate. Just there's, there's, there's certain offices, though, unfortunately, in my humble opinion, that they shouldn't be 
able to run because I think it violates uh, 268A and probably some other provisions in our charter and all that. But hey, we can keep talking it out. Yep. Um, so I guess on the motion, which was to give it leave to withdraw. Um, well, I, I'll I'll just have a discussion. I mean, I seconded it just for just for purpose discussion. I I think it kind of, I think you should bring this thing up with thirty three, and then we can have a, you know. So then I'll, I'll make a, I'll change amend my motion to table. Okay. I don't think we're gonna solve this. No, 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 tonight, no, no, no. We'll table it for now, and then I'll couple it with thirty three. I appreciate the council doing yeah. that. So I I'm gonna second that, and then we can have a we can talk it out more next time, right? All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, roll call vote. Uh, oh Councilor McGrath Smith. Yes. Uh, Councilor Varley. Yes, sir. Uh, Councilor Councilor uh, Bacon. Yes. Uh, and Councilor Rivera. Yes. That's a four zero vote for it to be tabled. Okay. Motion to take up item nineteen. Uh, all in favor. Aye. Uh, Aye. Item nineteen was filed uh, by former Councilor Puello. Order that speed humps be placed on South Summer Street. Petition attached. Uh, I don't have the petition in front of me, but I assume that there is one. Six twenty seven twenty three was dated and tabled. Um, I don't have. Any paperwork, Jeff? Is there anything with regards to the engineer saying anything around this? Just to be clear, the petition. Uh, we haven't been able to have an engineer look at it. So then, I guess next Motion steps. The table. To, is it true? Uh, oh, come, so before I do that, go ahead, Councilor Marley. Let's interject. Hold on. Oh, uh, I just want to interject. So there, there is. I a, got you next. There is a number thirty-five for Argyle Ave. So you have got. 19 for South Summer, and you got 35 for Argyle. And I guess my motion would be to take both those and get those over to the city engineer, whether she's acting or not. Right. She's an engineer. She needs to be able to walk and chew gum and do other things besides whatever it is that she's doing. I mean, this. this I'm is, sure she can. This is this is well. I mean, it's a matter it, of time. It, right? it has been proven, though. I it's mean, a matter of time. She's been doing this for more than a year. I don't know how much we want to pay her. That's all I'm saying. And she's getting paid. I'm so sure she does. I'm just saying there's more to her that job than right. what she's doing now. So, so I'll make a motion to add item 35, take it off the table, to be taken up with 19. With 19 right now. Uh, Is there a second? Do I hear in that one, yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, roll call vote. Councilor McGrath-Smith. Yes. Councillor Bartley? Yes. Councillor Vagan? Yes. And Councillor Rivera all and, vote yes. And then I'll make a motion to send item 19 and item 35 over to the engineer at DPW. And that's it, right? Assess, assess the thing and get back yeah. to us. That's it. Uh, second. Second. And then real quick on the discussion, Meg, you had your hand up. I just wanted to name for the record that that petition was certified by the clerk on May 18th, 2023. Like they okay. have been waiting a long time. Okay. Um, and so I just, I, I really think that we have to express that this has to be a priority. Okay, perfect. So then on the, uh, there was a second. Now, uh, all in favor, uh, roll call and, vote. And just as an editorial, yes, I have an approved speed hump through the engineer Three years so far waiting. Okay. Just FYI. Mm -hmm. So, uh, roll call vote. Councillor Mag McGrath Smith. Yes. Councillor Bartley. Yes, sir. Councillor Vacan. Yes. And Councillor Rivera. Yes. Um, so, 35 and 17, is it? 19. 19 will be coupled together. I'm um, sent to the engineer's office for review. Okay. And then I think once they're reviewed, just to be clear, we do a public meeting on it, right? Public hearing. I'm sorry, I don't remember that. Because I, I remember hold, holding a public yes. hearing recently for uh, Laurel Street. Look. Yeah, okay. A motion to take up item 20. Awesome, okay. item 20. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, item 20 was also followed by Councilor Puello. The following entry be added to the city ordinance section 86 schedule four. Stop streets, this will be directed to the ordinance committee to be heard. Stop street, stop burning street. Direction of travel, southerly intersection. So I'm not clear so on this. So it's Vernon and Maine. Is yeah. that what that means? I think so. Um, well, Vernon runs perpendicular to Maine, but it, well, so it's a stop sign at an intersection. So it would be Vernon and Maine. Would we want to send this to the engineer? So, yeah, there's a stop sign there now. 
there I'm is. Not, I'm not really sure what they're what we're driving at here. Yeah, okay, that, there, there's a stop sign there. Uh, why don't I just Street uh, Vernon uh, Street? You're, you're my motion. My motion is going to be to send this to the Public Works Department and to have them look at it and then come back to us with a recommendation. That's Second. It. Okay. How long for the recommendation? Because you know, uh, what, thirty days. Month. Thirty days. Yeah. Okay, so then your motion is send it to DBW, get back to us within thirty days for recommendation. Yeah, um, communication to, to Jeff, and then. Uh, and on. there's a second from Linda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Roll call vote. My bad. I'm Meg, uh, Councillor Meg McGrath Smith. Yes. Uh, Councillor Bartley. Yes, sir. Uh, Councillor Bacon. Yes. And can Councillor Rivera? Yes. That's a 4 0 vote. And I think it's uh, that's it. I just need a motion, motion to, to adjourn. adjourn. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Roll call Aye. vote. Mm. Councillor yes. McGrath Smith. <laughs> yes. yes. Councillor Bartley. Yes, sir. Yes. Councillor Bacon. Yes. Yes. And Councillor Rivera. Yes. Aren't you glad you You guys have late? a great night. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. One of my favorite actresses.